joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Univer Video is your platform for Christian content, and it gives you access to the church meetings of the Universal Church around the world, and they are in English. Even the meetings at the Temple of Solomon that provide live, simultaneous translations to English. All you have to do is sign up. And this is how: visit www.univervideo.com online, or download the application on your mobile device, and complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card ready, and choose your terms of payment. And before you know it, you'll be up and running. Stay connected to the things of faith during the 21 days fast of Daniel. Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you, your house, your family members, your neighbors, loved ones, and siblings. May the Holy Spirit be with all who fear God, and may He reveal His will to each of them. We have spoken a lot of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, and receiving the Holy Spirit is fundamental for our salvation. Pay attention to what I'm going to say. If a person is in their deathbed, and in the last moment they accept Jesus as their only Lord and Savior. In that moment, he is saved. He is saved, dies, and goes to where God is, where the Lord of their life is, the Lord Jesus. But why do we need to have the Holy Spirit? Why do we need to have the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the seal with the Holy Spirit? Why? Because faith. The practical faith comes from the Holy Spirit. He is the fountain of faith. He reveals faith. He reveals Jesus to each of us. So how many people know the Bible from cover to cover? They know the Bible well, but they don't have spirit. They don't have life. They live a life of suffering, of pain, weakened, morally and spiritually speaking, because the Holy Spirit is lacking. And focusing on this is where Jesus speaks about the conquest of the kingdom of heaven. He says, Then, the kingdom of heaven, pay attention, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened, likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. The ten virgins are, as the Bible mentioned, ones who are clean. Those who've been washed by the blood of Jesus, they've surrendered, repented from their sins. They're holy. They're pure. They're virgins because now they are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus. Because virgins in those days, in this parable, typifies, represents the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is pure, immaculate, and holy. However, in this journey to the encounter with the Lord, five of the virgins were wise. 
and the other five were called foolish. Five were wise and five were foolish. Look, Jesus is speaking in the church in a general form. People who form part of the dominate denominations, church A, B, C, D, and so forth. So from this physical church, this institutional church here in the world, five were virgins. Better saying, five were wise. And five were foolish. Jesus called them foolish. So all of us are in a journey to an encounter with the Lord Jesus. And Jesus is at the door because the last events have proved this. This last decade has shown signs of the return of the Lord. So we are walking to our encounter with the Lord Jesus. But between those who believe in the Lord Jesus, amongst the members, the virgins, members of the churches, the evangelical churches, there are five wise. Wise is one who thinks, reasons, weighs, is careful. But the foolish, Jesus calls them foolish. These are those who say, once saved, always saved. Or they say, your grace is sufficient. Those who live in sin, they live in sin in a conscious manner. They know they're sinning, but they are with joy because the grace of God is sufficient. However, they think that the grace of God works in this manner because they definitely don't know what the grace of God means because they think that the grace of God tolerates sin, little sins and big sins. And it's not like that. The conquest of the kingdom in heaven requires sanctification, holiness, righteousness. The person needs to be holy. Holy, which means a person who is separated from sin, separated from the world, separated. That is a holy person. Holy is not to be praised. Holy is that person who was separated by who? By the Lord Jesus. Separated. So these people who are separated in the universe of separated people, holy people, there are those who are wise, perseverant, and there are those who, well, now that I'm saved, now that I baptized in water, and in fact I speak in tongues and thinking that speaking in tongues is enough to be a witness of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, unfortunately, this is a terrible ignorance in this world. It has nothing to do with the other. So those who are foolish take their Christian faith in a relaxed manner. In a relaxed manner, which means they're not careful. They do not zeal for the truth. They don't live in the truth. They even reach the point of saying, Oh, I have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. But how can a person have the Spirit of Truth and walk with lies, deceit, walk in prostitution, in sin? So out there in the church, they live a life, You know, Lord, your grace is sufficient. But within the church, they seem to be holy. Which means this is a true affront, an insult to the Holy Spirit in God. Because people think they can joke with Him. 
People think that to be part of a church is enough to be saved. Pay attention. It's not enough for you to be in the church or even being a pastor or bishop or archbishop or whoever, the pope, whichever position, not even having a relevant position in the church, your salvation is guaranteed. The kingdom of heaven, my friend, is conquered. The kingdom of heaven is conquered. It's not something in which a person simply reaches anyhow. So see that Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and it needs to be lit and for it to be lit it needs the oil and the oil is the Holy Spirit. Your life needs to be lit before God. Your life, my life, our lives need to be well lit before God, which means shining, separated from the world, which is in darkness. Others live in darkness. Those who live in darkness are not the lamp. They're not like these virgins who have their lamps well lit. So when the foolish virgins took enough oil just for the journey, they were foolish. They were not careful. They did not carry within themselves fear and think that it could happen that the lamps could run out and go off. The bridegroom groom arrives and they're in the dark. And then what happens? They lose. They lose. As they say out there, you lose. So this is due to the lack of care, of the fear of the Lord. When we fear God, and I give my own testimony, I said this and I will repeat it. When I had my encounter with Jesus, I was saved. I said, my Lord, kill me. I don't want to live in this world. Why? Because I was afraid of losing the greatness of salvation. I had a terrible fear. And I said, Lord, take me. I don't want to live. Because I had received the Holy Spirit, the spirit of fear, towards my own salvation. I did not want to risk it. I was young, 19 years of age. I knew the world was evil. It was already evil back then. Imagine now. So, my friend, the fear of the Lord needs to lead our conscience, our care, care with our own soul, with our own salvation. It's pointless for me to win others and lose my soul. I'm not mad. I will always take care of the salvation of my soul. But for me to keep this alive within me, I need to have the fear, the spirit of fear, which is the Holy Spirit. To not sin and flee from evil, to flee from what is wrong, to flee from indecency, from pornography, to flee from everything which the world offers, which is worthless. I need to flee. I need to isolate myself. I need to live in a desert, we can say. I need to live in a bubble. Yes, the bubble of the kingdom of God. So that I may not be subject to lose the most precious thing in my life, which is my salvation. So think well of this, my friend. Perhaps you're a virgin. Pay attention. I say this with much conviction. 
if you're not careful with your own salvation, how will you take care of the salvation of others? If you do not fear for your own salvation, how will you try to save the others? How? So the lamp is what keeps our flame alive, which is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no way for you to overcome this world. Paul himself said this, that he who does not have the Spirit of God, he does not belong to him. He is not of God. He doesn't belong to God. So you always need to evaluate. To do a self-examination to see if something is wrong. And your conscious touches you. Our conscious is the judgment of God within us. Look, this is wrong. If we follow with that bad conscious, then we're going to lose the good conscious and consequently our salvation. Consequently, losing the fear of God, we also lose our salvation. But I see, I see that the more I fear by having respect, reverence, and dedication with my soul, my salvation, more I fear God. More I fear God. If I do not fear my salvation, oh, I'm saved. It's because I do not fear God. And then, it happens that those people who walk in sin, live in sin, and later say, no, the grace of God is sufficient, thinking that God tolerates sin. God is holy. God is holiness. Now, if God is holy, how can we live and serve the Holy One if we do not live in holiness? How? It's impossible. Your body, my body, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But if this body is deteriorating, dirty, filthy, living in destruction, in a mess, in disorder, how can you expect to receive the Spirit of God, which is pure, if your body is filthy? So first, you need to wash yourself, purify yourself, repent from your sin, to leave your life of sin behind, that the Holy Spirit can come and make a dwelling within you. We're going to speak more of this subject tomorrow because this is very important for the preservation of our salvation because out of the ten virgins, meaning out of ten Christians, only five were saved because the lamps of the five foolish ran out. They had no more oil, no backup. So they were on the outside. The bridegroom arrived, took those who were attentive, and the door was closed. And those five virgins remained on the outside. God bless you until tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. AG Helpline Call Center is open 24 hours a day, every day of the week, all year round. If you need help due to a serious problem you may be going through, if you feel that you have nowhere to turn to and desperately need someone to lend a listening ear, then we can help you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, your religion or race. Your call will be answered by someone who genuinely cares about you and have your best interests at heart. We also arrange home visits for the housebounds and hospital visits for anyone in great need of kindly human contact. Whether it is simply information you want or desperately need someone to talk to, we're here for you.